Hello reformers and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband. Now when we left off we were attempting to take this castle, specifically this is Yamiad Castle, or Jamiad Castle, whatever you want to say, and well, suffice it to say, we have now returned, and we are attempting to take it once more. Now, the main problem here is, of course, the obvious, you know, the, the, the archers that the Saranids have. And, well, they've been very effective. They've been very effective in what they've been doing to us, as we have been moving the siege tower to the walls. And they also have a bunch of Mamluks and Saranid guards ready to greet us on the battlements. So, obviously, that's... That's something that I'm not particularly happy about either, so yeah, we've really gone through the ringer here basically because if you just take a look, I mean, we've lost 10 units and we haven't killed any of them basically, so it's really bad, really, really bad. Maybe I'll be able to get through here if at all possible, I'd very much like to, but it really, really depends on, yep, yeah, there we go, ah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, it really depended on whether my ally was going to die there. I mean, that was the most hilarious thing. It depended on one of our friendly units actually perishing. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, exactly. That's that's literally this siege in a nutshell. Absolutely, because if you just take a look at what's going on here. I mean, look at that. How did he knock me down? That's crazy. Absolutely crazy for him to knock me down right there. Now, yeah, now, of course, we do have to... Yes. We also have to deal with the fact that Barney is, does not have a very good balance, or sense of balance, should I say. So, yeah, he's going to fall over all the time. Anyway, let's try and shoot these guys with our throwing weapons a little bit. Come on. Can I, can I please? Get, yeah, there we go. Oh, yes. That hit him in a very, very sore place, that's for sure. Anyway, let's see if we can take out some of these. Oh, no. We're getting knocked down everywhere right now, which is really, really surprising to me. I haven't been knocked down in the last, what, five episodes, and now, all of a sudden, we're getting knocked down by every single thing. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a soft breeze, we're probably going to get knocked down by that. Yeah, it's probably because we haven't fought very many Saranid guards in our time against the Saranids here. Oh, yes, and I haven't spent my time going to kill the Master Archers either. Thankfully, however, they seem to be using blunt weapons. And obviously that is making things a little bit easier for us because, well, then we don't lose units. And obviously the only people that can actually kill us are the archers, which is not particularly good in itself. I'm actually going to retreat from this position here because if I die, then the siege ends. And if I may remind you, this is a siege tower. So I really do not want to be in a position where I have to participate in another building of the siege tower oh yeah by the way i also did go to nara i went to nara and i picked up a couple of reinforcements and well yeah they, they are basically in the form of kurgit lancers so we have about 30 odd kurgit lancers in our army right now but as you can see do you see how many casualties we've suffered it's crazy i don't even know why it's just because the master archers isn't it yeah it's because of the master archers but the main problem here is that I don't know how they were able to do it. I mean, they only have a handful remaining. I mean, we're going to take a look on the, the casualty screen and we're going to see what's actually going on with, you know, the archers and how many they actually did have. Because I think that would be pretty interesting. I think that would be pretty interesting to find out because it doesn't seem like they have that many, but maybe it is. I don't know. I mean, we're, I guess we'll find out very, very soon. Ah, uh, yeah. There was it, it was just an absolute pain, though. An absolute pain to take this. Hopefully, we're going to get you know, a little bit of a better reprieve in the future when we're going to try and take a castle or something like that. And maybe they'll have less Master Archers. I think that would be kind of nice. Anyway, there you go. We lost 13 Swadian Knights and 6 Man at Arms. I mean, really, that's just... Oh. Awful. Absolutely awful. And there were only 14 Serenid Master Archers and 7 regular Archers. That just shows the Master Archers aren't actually that bad, because the Knights and Man-at-Arms, they both have shields, as far as I'm aware. It seemed like some of them didn't actually have shields, but maybe their shields were destroyed or something like that. But anyway, uh, that was... Hmm. Very, very happy to get that over with at the very least. So, let's take a look and see what we're doing with our units here. What are we going to do? I guess we're going to take a couple of sergeants and sharpshooters. they got some man-at-arms. We might as well just take everything, basically, because 
we have enough space. I really did not think that I would need those reinforcements, but apparently I did. Apparently I did. So yeah, as you can see, look at that. All the Swadian Knights, all the Man at Arms have been killed or knocked unconscious. Ah, awful. Absolutely awful. Okay, well, there you go. Not going to really take too much loot. Don't really see the necessity in it. Okay, so who are we going to give this to? Well, I I don't know. That's the thing. Mm, that's, a, that's a bit difficult. I mean, I should probably give this to Lord Druly, if anyone, because he's the one that has the least. Maybe Lord Play could use it? Yeah, I'll give it to Lord Play. Why not? I think we have a bunch of vassals coming to join us anyway, so I don't really see the necessity to sort of, you know, be too uh, stingy, I suppose you could say. Yeah, be too stingy with the, the properties and the various fiefs that we're acquiring at the moment. Anyway, yeah, I do actually have a large amount of vassals at Nara, but I found that in the past it's actually a pretty decent idea not to speak to them unless you need, you know, unless you need the assistance. Because at the moment, I'm not entirely sure. Do we need the assistance? Do we need a couple of extra vassals to patrol around here? I don't know, because the vassals we have right now, they're pretty strong, you know, they're doing, they're doing their jobs pretty nicely. And I'm not entirely sure if we need extra hands on deck. Alright, so I've been doing a little bit of off-screen work, not too much, it was about, I don't know, a week in game I guess. So basically what I did, I just waited at Yamayad Castle to see what was going on and make sure that it was okay and that Lord Druly was, you know, taking ownership of it pretty nicely. And so then what I did was I called for a campaign and Lord Druly himself turned up and we also have Lord Tarchius, Lord Akadan, and I believe we have someone else. Can't remember his name because, you know, he's he's a very important cog in the machine. Uh, yeah, that is going to try and kill everyone at Tarama Castle. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, he, yeah, that's the thing. I'm, I'm insulting him a lot right now, even though he's probably quite important. He's probably quite a, quite an important fellow. Anyway, let's actually just take a look and see whether I can find whoever it is. There's, there's Akadan. We've already found Druli as well. And I'm sure he's here somewhere. Who is it? Lord Play! Ah, Lord Play. I'm so I'm terribly sorry. He's actually got a pretty decent army. And I'm just like, oh yes, I completely forgot your name. Who are you again? Yes, exactly. That's going to happen. Anyway, we have here a pretty easy siege, I think, because this layout is pretty okay. You know, it's decent. And also, it's a siege tower. And usually, I would hate siege towers, but in this case, when we have a huge amount of our own vassals and we're going to be charging the walls, I, I feel like having the width of a siege tower is just so much more useful than having the increased well, should I say decreased building time of the ladders. So I guess I'm just going to sort of just mess around a little bit, waiting for the siege tower to arrive at the walls, and I guess we'll be charging them then. All right, so we are almost at the walls, and I got to say that these Serenid Master Archers are starting to get on my nerves. So I think we're probably going to be making a little bit of a peace agreement with them, maybe pretty soon. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, is that... I feel like we have an advantage in the way that we are dealing with our own units. I feel like our units far outdo the Saranis units, but they just have the right combination. The right combination they have at the moment is just a bunch of Saranid Master Archers. And then, of course, they are going to have Mamluks, and they're also going to have Saranid Guards at the top in the Battlements area right here. So this is going to be pretty painful. Going to try and live... That is my goal. That is my objective right now. I'm going to try and just live through the siege as much as I can, at the very least. I just do not want to die prematurely. If I die prematurely, then this is going to really be one of the biggest wastes of time ever. And I would very much appreciate it if it wasn't. So I'm just going to hang back a little bit. Going to allow our units to sort of go in and then just see what happens. But as it stands... I don't really hold too much hope, to be honest. I mean, usually I'll be like, yes, I think we'll probably do this no problem at all, but I have a bad feeling about this, to be honest. I mean, just look at how many casualties we've suffered so far. I mean, our allies have taken the full brunt of the assault so far. They have lost almost 55 units, 
and we have lost, well, 17, which is not really a big deal, but still, our allies have about, let's just see here, let's just work this out a little bit, approximately, they have about maybe 250, 300 units all together, and then of course we add another 100 on top of that, so, I don't know, what's that, uh, 350, 400, I guess, it's not, not really a lot, is it? No, it's not really a lot. And we are not outnumbering the opponent at all. You know, we don't have any kind of battle advantage or anything like that. So I guess we're just going... Well, look, we're actually getting inside. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty surprised about this. I am pretty surprised. And we are still losing a huge amount of units. Well, hopefully I'll be able to eliminate this archery nest in particular. I think this one has probably been the most effective for the opponent. So hopefully we'll be able to do a little bit of damage to it and hopefully take it out. So let's see. Am I able to? Am I able to do something here? Maybe. Just don't block me, please. I would appreciate it if you don't if you don't defend at all. That would be nice. That would be very nice. There we go. Seems like our armor is doing a very, very nice job at defending us. Because <laughs> goodness knows I'm not going to defend myself. Uh, you know, we need the armor to be, you know, doing, doing its thing. Making sure that we're all safe and cozy and protected and all that sort of stuff. I don't know why you want to be cozy, though, in this hot weather. I mean, literally. You know, where's the sun? There's the sun. It's blindingly hot, no doubt. I mean, we are in the desert after all. And I mean, we started in the desert after all, so I think, <laughs> I think in general, Barney is kind of used to it by now, probably. So let's just, uh, uh, come on, let's, let's shoot that Mamluk in the face. Or, or, okay, find that archer then. Why not? I'll just, I'll take anything, really. There we go. Come on. Yeah, yeah, no. Nah. Are you serious? Come on. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit of damage. Nice. Okay, can I get a cut? Oh, I was hopeful that I might be able to get a little bit more damage there, but no, no, no such luck. Okay, so this is where we do a crowd surf. I, I hope that we'll be able to pull it off. If we're not able to, then I'll be a bit disappointed, but it's been a while since I've been able to do one of these, and I think, actually, should I? Should I even do one of these? Because you know what's going to happen, right? You know, you know I'm going to go down there and then I'm going to get immediately focused by all of the Saranid archers. I'm going to do it. Let's go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, nice. That actually did work out a little bit better than I anticipated, but yeah, there we go. Now let's hope that they don't all gang up on me now. If you don't gang up on me, I should have a pretty reasonable time of things. Uh, some of them are focusing me, but it's okay because I found a little hidey hole space. So I'll be able to just chill out here a little bit and maybe do a little bit of damage. Oh no, you are annoying. You are annoying. Oh, you are extremely annoying, you person. <laughs> oh, that, uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's good. That's good, right? Yep. Yeah. And then, yeah, we got killed by the Saranid Guard. Are you serious? Yeah, I knew as soon as I saw a Saranid Guard there that we, we were going to have a lot of problems. Absolutely a lot of problems. So let's have a look and see whether I can tell them to surrender. No, it seems like we can't. Okay, so they only have 30 remaining. Ah, only 30. I really wish it was a little bit easier to starve them out. And you know, try and get them out that way, but uh, that is, uh, that's a real shame. All right, so as Barney was just contemplating standing in this siege tower while, you know, his forces moved said siege tower to the battlements, he thought to himself, hey, you know what, I think I'm the weak link in this army, so I'm going to stay out of the way in future. And that's, that's basically what I'm thinking myself, personally. I think I'm probably, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be, I'm going to be in the action, but I'm going to be on the outskirts of the action. I personally feel like going straight in there, as I, th I did say that it was going to be quite risky for me to do that crowd surf. It was actually one of the better crowd surfs that we've done in recent memory, so I suppose it's maybe worth it. Maybe worth it. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, we would have won that siege in one fell swoop. And Barney's antics, you know, he wanted to do the crowd surf, so, you know, <laughs> that caused us to fail it. But it's okay, because we do get a second chance. Ooh, that hit him where the sun doesn't shine. Oh my. Okay, he's not, he's not going to be very... Well, he's not going to wake up because he's dead, but 
The point is, is that if he was going to wake up, he'd be very unhappy. He certainly would. Anyway, we only have 21 enemies remaining, and I think we should have this in the bag. Really just depends on whether we're able to penetrate their defenses right now. I mean, what, what is actually going on here? What, who is keeping us? A couple of Saranid guards? Can I just ask something real quick? Why, whenever we are up against the Saranid guards, why are they super good? <laughs> and then when we have them, they die in under five seconds. I don't know what's going on with that. I mean, yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're the highest tier infantry unit that the Saranids have, but still, they, they're not that good, you know? They have pretty, you know, light armor in comparison to some of the other infantry, and their weapon proficiencies are, you know, they're, they're okay, you know, they're above average, and, you know, you just kind of think to yourself, okay, so I have, okay, I'm just gonna give a random number. I have 50 Saranid guards. And if I go up against someone, you know, in a field battle or whatever, 39 of those Saranid guards are going to die. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know what's going on with that, but yeah. And then you go up against that guy and he has, you know, 20 Saranid guards and those Saranid guards kill everyone. And, and you have like 100 or something. I don't know. It just seems like there's some weird stuff going on with the Saranid guards. I'm, I'm calling hijinks. I'm calling hijinks on that. But anyway, point is... <laughs> we actually did survive and we actually did do that. That's fantastic. Unfortunately, as you can see, our allies did take a pretty big hit by that, but that's okay because they'll be able to, you know, get back in it very, very easily. I am going to be able to take as many of these guys as I wish because we have enough space from all of the casualties. Ugh, more and more and more casualties. That's absolutely awful, isn't it? Anyway, let's just take that and it's absolutely pointless to take any of this. Thank you very much. Okay. I think I'm probably going to give... Hmm, I'm not entirely sure. Should I give Druli this? Because I gave Lord Play the other thing. So I think Lord Druli could potentially use a castle. So let's give him one. Tartius now only has zero in relation. So I'm probably going to have to give him the next thing. I mean, they did come and help me, didn't they? Where's Where's Tartius? We've got Lord Play... Lord Akadan and Lord Druli, and there's Tartius. So yes, Tartius did come and help us, so we probably should have given that to him, but I suppose that's just, you know, one of those things that happens. Anyway, I'm going to just level these guys up real quickly, and there we go. Okay, so now, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm a bit in two minds about this, really, because we could either continue throwing units at our opponent... And by that I mean, obviously, you know, just continue, you know, besieging them and all that. Trying to take as many fiefs as possible. Or, because obviously the Saranids have been wanting it for a very, very long time indeed. They might be, I don't know, they're, they're definitely going to benefit from a peace agreement. Because if we give them a peace agreement, it's going to mean that they are only on bad terms with one faction or two factions and now they're at, you know they're at war against three of them i mean it's us the kingdom of reformia and kingdom of vagias and also kingdom of nords they are all up against the saranids so it's pretty i don't know i think it's in our best interest just to keep going but i'm always kind of sad whenever i see so many casualties. I mean, th that's the thing. These units are nameless, you know. They could basically... They're just they're just numbers, really. I mean, that's the thing. You know, in, in Warband, you don't really get very close to any of your units unless you give them, like, a backstory or something like that. Like, for example, I did talk about and I did make a bet on how long that Watchman would survive. And apparently, according to one of you, he actually died in the last siege of the previous episode. So... <laughs> That was that was pretty short-lived, wasn't it? That was pretty short-lived, which is... Uh, that's not particularly good, is it? No, not particularly good. And, yeah, so if you, if you don't give them any kind of backstory or give them a name or something like that, then it doesn't really give you any kind of emotional response. And so me losing units, it's a pain. Yeah, sure. It's definitely a pain because leveling them up takes quite a bit of time, you know, about two weeks waiting give or take maybe a little bit longer dependent on you know what units you want if you want swadian knights then obviously it's going to take a lot longer but yeah anyway i'm going to take a look a quick a quick look 
around the world map just so that you can see what's currently going on and oh yeah one of you had a, a pretty good idea actually I believe one of the Nord vassals must have defected from the Nords to the Serenids. That must be the only only reason or only way that Tyr would have been taken so easily because if you think about it, I mean, it must have a full garrison. It must have a full garrison because if, if it doesn't, then I have no idea why the Nords have not acted on it. But yes, otherwise, I personally feel like the Rodox should probably... I don't know, they, they should probably be doing something. I mean, they haven't been doing anything for quite some time. The Serenids are basically, they're not on their last legs, but they're getting there. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.